You guys like upgrades, don't ya? MBM's own patented steroid injections? Well, as we all know, they're not all created equal. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but then you have the ones people think are bad, but are actually good. Not in every situation, mind you, their utility fluctuates according to map, mission, and team experience, but they shouldn't be counted out entirely in the field of viable options. They may be more specialized and might take more effort to work, but given the right conditions, they can really shine. Do the boosty thing if you want, but for now, let's get right into it. Number 1. Two-Way Teleporter The last time I praised this upgrade, I got some questionable comments regarding that statement's legitimacy. And that makes complete sense. Two-Way relies on both downtime and players actually using it in order to get the full effect. This doesn't happen on bad teams. This also doesn't happen on expert missions. If these things are common for you, Two-Way might seem like a dud, but... When the stars align and you get a group that can make full use of it, those do be some good looking damage numbers. I've seen some pretty effective strategies in MVM, but nothing quite beats the sheer power of three heavies spamming crit canteens as much as they please. But that implies that it's a strictly late game upgrade and it's not. No matter the wave, your team is granted free use to top themselves off on upgrades with no DPS loss. Even outside of combat, two-way expedites rollouts between waves without having to sacrifice any of these in the process. Now there are some drawbacks here, it costs 250 credits, you need to call out when you buy it, you should place it close to and face towards the spawn doors, and yeah, you need a riskier teleporter spot so your team will actually use it, but if none of that is an issue for you or your team, Team, this little red circle has the potential to be the biggest time saver in the entire game. Number 2. Canteen Specialist Does your medigun upgrade tab look like this? If so, you're probably doing something wrong. Avoiding canteen spec is very typical among new medic players, and it's the prime component in what categorizes someone as an idle med. Yeah, they have names for everything now, I don't know. That's not to say you should skimp out on all your healing upgrades, shittier teams especially will need that assistance, but as the saying goes, the best defense is a good offense. So yeah, trade some healing to stack some crit canteens, and watch as any robot that poses a significant threat threat is dicked down without a fuss. You don't even need to keep your medigun attached to your target like you do for an uber, so it doesn't impede your conventional medic responsibilities in any way. Emphasizing survivability is okay, but it shouldn't be the go-to in all situations. The best way to mitigate damage is to wipe out the source, and canteen specialist effectively doubling your amount of ubers per wave is absolutely medic's best tool for doing so. There's some debate over when you should buy one tick versus when you should max it out. Uh, one is usually enough to suffice, but honestly, it's personal preference. Number 3. Ammo Refill Canteens Staying on the subject of canteens, here's one that gets overshadowed by its two older brothers, but it really shouldn't be that way. While crits reign supreme in the late game and ubers top the charts for survivability, the benefit of ammo canteens, especially in the early game, is substantial, particularly with MVM's most optimal loadouts. The Heatmaker, the Beggars, and the Brass Beast are all fantastic weapons, but they undeniably have sustainability issues when compared to the other options. So instead of of incurring a DPS loss from running to a dispenser or an ammo kit, this canteen will keep you in the fight. It also instantly restores the charge on Mad Milk, Jurati, and some other weapons, which can be a lifesaver if you use them too haphazardly. The best part about them though is that they're only 25 credits. For the utility they provide, it's a pretty good deal. Number 4. Jump Height a lot of people think that jump height is good for scout and scout only, but in actuality a lot of classes benefit from it, more than you might think. You can jump over more barriers, which is great for heavy. The baguette bots can't stab you from up here, which is good for sniper. You can jump on top of robots and cancel taunts, which is good for pyro when using the flog. But the biggest beneficiary by far is the engineer, who by jumping really high in the air and destroying his sentry, makes the buster wander around aimlessly never detonating. And as we all know, Ubersaw plus Sentry Buster equals an easy fucking game. Jump Height is very situational. It's not a priority upgrade, and it's much more of an extra credit dump whenever you get the chance. But it has some hidden niches that many of you probably didn't know about, and well, now you do. 
Lastly, number 5. The Ghost Upgraded Soda Popper. The Soda Popper is hands down Scout's best primary in MBM, but to keep it from being too broken, Valve made it so you can't upgrade the firing speed like you can for the other scatter guns. Well, uh, oops, yes you can. Here's how you do it. Step 1. Equip the stock scatter gun. Step 2. Leave the spawn room and switch to the Soda Popper. Step 3. Go back to spawn and go to the upgrade station. Step 4. Buy an upgrade not on the scattergun section. It can be a resistance, jump height, mad milk slow, movement speed, whatever. You'll now see that the scout has switched from the stock to the soda popper. Step 5. Once you see that weapon switch, go to the scattergun section and upgrade one tick of firing speed. Step 6. Double check your upgrades to make sure that you have it. Now this is actually more significant than you might think. Not only do you fire faster, obviously, but by doing this little trick, the Soda Popper overtakes the shortstop as Scout's highest damaging scattergun in the late game and on tanks, whereas without it, the shortstop would have the edge damage-wise. I highly recommend you try it, because it's a lot of fun. And yeah, that's it for the video. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, and let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And while you're down there, subscribe to the channel for more MBM-related content. That's all I got, guys. Thank you for watching the video. See ya.